Hey everybody, I want to just bring a few things to your attention. Now, the COVID-19 virus is, it's a real threat. Obviously, the world is reacting to this. And I'm not here to stimulate fear. I'm not here to be opportunistic. Okay, I want to make that very clear. What I'm doing is presenting some evidence and suggesting a treatment option. And the treatment option would be to support your immune system so that your body is able to fight viruses, to prevent illness, to prevent serious illness, okay? I am a proponent of supporting a healthy body every day, all day long, and this doesn't change that at all. Now, we do some interesting treatments here at Dr. Studio that... I believe are incredibly effective at supporting the immune system and could actually flesh out to be antiviral and effective treatments against COVID. Now that has been unproven at this particular point, but I'm going to give you an overview of what's happening in the world right now with testing or looking at some of the treatments actually that we do here routinely at Dr. Studio to actually combat COVID-19, all right? I can tell you that our experience is that we do these treatments and we do them as a preventative measure. We will have people that are sick with viruses and, and other uh, infections that will come in and we'll treat them and they get better. Uh, I am making no claims here about curing COVID-19, though I am quite excited about the opportunity to help you to support your immune system. Okay, and you can reach your own conclusions. And I would suggest to you that facts matter. And I'm not trying to uh, cloud that arena. I, uh, facts are important. Now, in my world as a functional physician, I look at mechanism of action and quite frequently I have to actually make the leap between what I know from mechanism of action and the science of what's happening to, to making some assumptions. Now, that is not the way we do medicine in this country. There is usually uh, some money involved in studying different treatments and I get that and so often there is no money that is available for some of the things that I do here. And so I'm forced to make some leaps, if you will. Now, it's an interesting time right now because in China, they are forced now to study some of the things that it is that I have suggested could be really very helpful. So we're going to see some studies coming out of China that are either going to support uh, in favor of these treatments moving forward as viable treatment options, or they will absolutely show that there's no benefit. Okay, so it's interesting. I'm excited about these studies because I know what I know anecdotally. I know what I am able to deduce from mechanism, and uh, I, I know I certainly have integrity with the way that I treat my myself, my family, my patients, um, and it's just awesome when we can have some evidence of effectiveness. I love that. Often I don't get the benefit of that. So the first thing I want you to realize is the COVID-19 absolutely can cause sepsis. All right. And this, the global sepsis analysis, there's the World Sepsis Association, I believe is another one, really explains what this is all about. And so sepsis is when the body is, is overrun by infection and then it starts attacking it itself for the most part. You, uh, um, the normal response becomes overwhelming to the body and, and it's life-threatening organ dysfunction caused by dysregulated host response to infection. So what that means is my body mounts a response, things get out of control, and now uh, there's a fire and, and uh, my immune system is starting to do things that work against me. And that's what sepsis is. And it's important that you understand that. So I want to show you that um, the first thing I want to show you, oops, sorry, is that vitamin C infusion could very well be helpful against severe COVID-19 infection. 
Okay. Now, there is a multi-center study right now in the U.S. that is looking at vitamin C infusions for the treatment of sepsis to lower death, morbidity, okay, mortality rather, to effectively decrease the number of people who will die from sepsis. And, and this is now in a multi-location study, multi-center study, because there were some early findings that showed that this could be promising, okay? And there's all kinds of controversy about all of this, okay? All kinds of controversy. Now, when I look at the human body and the mechanism of action that nutrients, minerals, vitamins have to, to fuel up the immune system, to maintain homeostasis and balance, it makes perfect sense that you stack the deck in favor of the body having everything it needs to function normally. I do not treat people with sepsis here in my clinic. I don't treat people with pneumonia in my clinic. What I do is keep people healthy. And I do that by making sure that their body has everything that it needs to work in their favor. Um, and so I want to help you understand that in severe disease, the things that I am doing on a regular basis are now being studied to potentially treat some serious diseases, okay? So certainly to keep your immune system healthy and to be able to um, uh, hedge your bets, if you will, against viral infection of any sort, whether it's you know common cold or pneumonia, um, viral pneumonia or influenza or COVID-19, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. We need to keep our bodies healthy. And so our bodies have an inherent ability to heal themselves if we have everything that we need. Now, I want to show you also that China is now looking at exosomes. These are mesenchymal stem cells. So these are the same exosomes or similar from MSCs that I have in my freezer to treat severe novel coronavirus pneumonia. Okay, and there's a there's a few different things, but what I what is really cool is when and this is um, you know clinicaltrials.gov, you can take a look at this. When you look at oh this uh, outcome measures, there's one eligibility criteria. All right, let's see. There's a couple here that really show an exciting mechanism of action. Okay. In any case, you can you can look these up, but I'll actually attach the links to these pages in this video. Okay. I want you to have the information. That's all. I'm not making any claims. I am just simply uh, showing you what it is that I believe is likely going to be found effective. These are things that I do now here in the clinic, and anecdotally, we see some amazing. Uh, benefits, though we've not treated anybody with a specific coronavirus infection. And I want to make that very, very clear. My intention is not to mislead anyone at all. China is looking at that the umbilical cord MSCs, uh, which again, Wharton's jelly, which we have in our freezer as well, to treat COVID-19. Okay. Now, exosomes may likely be more beneficial because they cross the blood brain barrier. They can move very readily through the, um, through the tissue. And, uh, and, and some of the mechanism of action here is actually stated. Okay. Another one for the mesenchymal stem cells. I don't think that's, yeah, that's a different one. So there's a lot of activity going on in China now, kind of at that tail end. Now you can bet that they've treated some people with these, these, uh, technologies. You can bet that they have. People who have been uh, in rough shape, they've treated. I I'm, I'm promise you that that's how this happens. They have found some potential benefit. Nothing is proven out yet, which is why we register clinical trials and we look to see. Was it luck? Was this person going to um, survive anyway? Or is there increased survival rate 
when you treat with some of these stem cell products, exosomes. So there's, you know, the question is now up, up uh, for grabs and there are active recruiting for participants. So I'm really excited. I'm really excited. It looks like we're going to get some preliminary data uh, in the spring, and then in the fall, we'll likely have some kind of papers that are, that are written. When things are overwhelmingly beneficial, often we'll see some early study results, and that's not to, um, that's not to be misleading at all. And, and conversely, when things pan out to be to be dangerous, or, you know, it's not showing any benefit at all. Lots of times these studies are abandoned and that is then written. So um, that's what's great about science is you make a hypothesis and then you do the study to understand what the truth is. It either proves or disproves. We don't, we don't do studies to prove our hypothesis. We don't stack the deck in that favor, though that's quite frequently done in clinical trials for pharmaceutical medications. I have been involved in these studies and, and that's really uh, what sometimes happens. So you have to read these studies once they're finished. You have to understand what the inclusion and exclusion criteria were and all of those are listed uh, below here. And you, you know, where was it that the study was either prolonged and the inclusion exclusion was adjusted or you know, do we set out to, to really understand what's happening here? All right, we talked a bit about uh, the vitamin C. And again, this is, this is really pretty awesome. And it talks about how vitamin C could very well be an amazing treatment against or in favor of recovery once someone does get sepsis and a respiratory distress, okay, which is really what the COVID virus is, okay? Now, again, you have to stop and think, well, gee, was it because they didn't have enough vitamin C on board, which is how they got themselves in this predicament, and then you send in some vitamin C and it's able to, to start to give the body what it needs to turn this thing around. It is my assumption, it is my understanding, it's my opinion that that's exactly what happens. So why does somebody get a, a virus and have fulminant disease and, and somebody else doesn't? Often you have same age, same gender, same everything, and yet one does and one doesn't. It's not a different strain of the virus. It's the same virus. It's that this body was more prepared than that body. And again, that is my opinion, but it certainly makes sense to me, and it's what I see in my clinical practice. Okay, and then I want to talk to you about light therapy. So ultraviolet irradiation of the blood, the cure that time forgot. This is a great paper. And it shows you how this UBI, we call it, was extensively used for a long time to treat many diseases, including septicemia, pneumonia, tuberculosis, arthritis, asthma, even polio. These early studies showed a lot of benefit. And then antibiotics were developed. And thank goodness, I'm not anti-antibiotic, but you do not then suddenly say that these things don't work, okay? They do work. This is a paper written by Michael Hamlin, who is a very well-respected, by the way, PhD who works for Harvard. He's at the Mass General Hospital. He has written a lot about this. In fact, this is a quote from him. In general, UBI is what he's referring to, has great potential to quiet the cytokine storm in sepsis and effectively treating some of the very resistant pathogens. That's what we're looking at here, okay? If you look that up, I'm gonna show you right here, these are very resistant, antibiotic resistant pathogens. So these are bacteria and the COVID is a virus, so I'm not talking about the same thing. I wanna be completely transparent. Uh, what he's saying is, it's in his opinion this, that this device, the devices that we use here at the studio, we have four of them, we use them every day, should be welcome as a potential candidate to treat sepsis and other inflammatory causing, uh, uh, pathogen causing problems. In this particular case, he's referring to these resistant bugs. It is safe. It has been very effective in the past. 
It is appropriate to repeat what I said at the end of the review paper. We would like to propose that UBI, which is UV blood irradiation, be reconsidered and reinvestigated as a treatment for systemic infections caused by multi-drug resistant gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria in patients who are running out or have already run out of options. All right, so again, antibiotic resistant bacteria. Patients at risk for sepsis should also be considered as candidates for UBI. Sepsis, again, being caused by, in this particular case, he's referring to bacteria, but we also know that the COVID-19 can cause sepsis. So again, this is really important that, I'm going to say it again, I am not suggesting that it has been proven that UBI, UV blood irradiation, IV vitamins, and low-level light therapy, which is the UBI, and exosomes or Wharton's jelly have been proven to be effective. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is China's looking at this as a possibility. The, the experts, people who understand these mechanisms, and certainly back in the day, these, these um, technologies were used and they were used effectively, okay, used effectively. Now we also use ozone and you can hear about some ozone in this paper right here, the ultraviolet radiation of blood, the cure the time forgot. Again, you can get the full text. I'm gonna give you these links with this video. We do a treatment called the trifecta. The trifecta is vitamins and minerals, um, often the Bs and the Cs, with the UBI, blood irradiation, and ozone. That trifecta we do all the time. We get amazing results. We are building the immune system. You feel different, typically. You, the, you're more energized. You feel more clear. There's a lot that we are able to do with these things before you're infected, so as a preventative measure. Exosomes I've been using for a while now. There's a, some, some um, studies that we participate in, and also I have patients that come in who are perfectly healthy that want to enjoy the benefit of a proposed regeneration. And I'm saying proposed, we don't have the studies on this. I use them myself and we have seen some real significant benefit. The world is excited about some of these technologies, uh, exosomes, umbilical cord stem cells, placental stem cells. The world is excited. We're starting to see benefits in Alzheimer's, neurodegenerative stuff, um, all kinds of diseases, autoimmune diseases. And now we have China studying these things for COVID-19, okay? So that's all I've got. That's, that's really important. I'm putting myself out here because I want you to be informed um, and I do not want you to misunderstand what I'm saying, but I do believe that trifectas can be incredibly impactful at increasing your ability to fight infection and to live at your full potential. And I also believe that exosomes and mesenchymal stem cell derived exosomes in particular can be very, very effective at stimulating appropriate and healthy immune response, as well as stimulating regeneration. And there is some evidence that exosomes, mesenchymal stem cell exosomes, can be effective at killing viruses. So that's all I've got. I wish you nothing but the best. Let me know if we can help you. We are open. We believe that it is our responsibility to take care of people. And we are doing everything in our power to keep the clinic clean. You will see extraordinary um, and efforts to do that. So I, I wish you well. Thank you. And, and after this whole uh, coronavirus has moved through and we are in recovery, it does not negate the fact. In fact, it supports the fact that you must keep your immune system healthy. You are only ever as healthy as your immune system. Lots of things you can do to, to do that on a daily basis. And uh, there's all kinds of resources available. I'm happy to help you uh, here at Dr. Studio. So thanks again. Good luck.